Israel's lies about their war on Gaza are getting so outrageous that even the BBC are calling them out. This is Roz Atkins pointing out the holes in Israel's story about the Al Shifa hospital hiding a Hamas HQ. This IDF animation posted in late October claims to represent a Hamas tunnel system underneath the hospital. But having been inside Al Shifa since early Wednesday, Israel's yet to produce evidence of the tunnels. It has allowed the BBC and Fox News to film at the hospital, though only locations of Israel's choice. This is what they found. Israel also released its own seven-minute video, which BBC Verify has analysed. A watch, visible in that video, suggests it was filmed a few hours before the BBC arrived. And this IDF video was posted, then deleted, then reposted, this time without a section referring to an Israeli soldier who'd been held hostage. I don't know when this was used the last time. Also in the video, we see a room with an MRI machine. And if you zoom in, and we get some light over here. What you will be able to see are is military equipment. The BBC was shown the same room. And what we see in the two videos doesn't precisely match. For example, there's one gun in the IDF video, two by the time of the BBC footage. Israel has told BBC Verify this is because more weaponry and terrorist assets were discovered throughout the day. And as always, an AK-47. Israel also says its video is a single shot with no edits. But this appears to be an edit. We don't know the reasons for that edit, nor how significant it is. The IDF, though, says suggestions it's manipulating the media are incorrect. The IDF video also shows military equipment in other locations, though we can't verify how it came to be there. And what we see in this IDF video doesn't equate to Israel's description of al-Shifa as an operational command center for Hamas. The US is using a different phrase, saying al-Shifa was used as a command and control node. That implies a much smaller facility. And as Israel makes the case for this operation, let's consider the Geneva Conventions, the foundations of the rules of war. They state that hospitals can lose their protection if they are used to commit acts harmful to the enemy. Israel believes Hamas has done this in al-Shifa and says that what's been discovered so far is just the start. Well, that was really important. That was a really good report by the BBC. And this really matters because, you know, Israel weren't just saying, oh, the, uh, we need to bomb this hospital because there might be a, a few rusty guns in there. They were saying this was a Hamas ha ha headquarters. And the reason they had to say that, right, is because international law, yes, it does say that hospitals can lose their protected status if they are being used for military purposes. But it has to be proportionate. Anything you do, you know, at any point in a war has to be proportionate. And so if you are going to make a hospital unusable, right, if you're, if you're going to enter a hospital, if you're going to bomb parts of a hospital, you need to have a very, very valuable military target there, right? Really valuable military target. If it's just a room with a few rusty guns, that is not a valuable military target. That is not the kind of military target that would justify attacking a hospital. So a lot has been rested on that claim, right? Joe Biden, we've seen Joe Biden say, oh, he's got the intelligence that there is a Hamas HQ under that hospital. And they've had since Wednesday there, so we're sort of at least 48 hours um, on since they sort of gained control of the hospital. And all they can provide is yeah, some rusty guns, which, as um, Ros Atkins explained there, seem to have moved. You know, They bring the media in here, oh, you've got these two guns here, it was one before. Um, I'm joined by Kieran Andreu. Um, welcome to the show. It does seem significant that sort of even the BBC are now sort of calling out IDF lies, isn't it? I think what it says, or what it shows, first of all, is that Israeli propaganda is so stretched that it has seriously under-resourced its military propaganda, or at least I hope that that's what it suggests. The claims that are being made are growing increasingly ridiculous, and the so-called evidence to try and back it up seems to be growing ever more tenuous. And I think it's instructive that, you know, journalists, I'm sure, at the BBC and other large mainstream institutions are willing to go along with a certain line for a certain distance. But one would hope that at a certain point, in the end, they are journalists. And they, do, they did presumably have some, 
you know, aspirations as a gadfly or as somebody who could at least try and uncover truth at some point in their careers. Uh, coarsened, though those ideals probably have been made by working for institutions like the BBC and Sky and so on. So I think what's happening is, as Israel's claims uh, and the evidence grows ever more tenuous, the more insulting it is, essentially, to journalists to be shown this kind of dreck and expected uh, uh, and, and have them expect uh, to believe that they'll believe it and that they will report it the way that the Israeli military hopes it will be reported. I also was reminded watching the piece, uh, Michael, of when Tony Benn went on air, I think about 15 years ago now, during the Operation Cast-led bombardment of Gaza. And he refused to not read the Gaza Appeal telephone number. And what he said, live on air, so it was uncontrollable essentially, was very instructive. He said, I've been at the BBC all day long and nobody that I've spoken to agrees with what the BBC editorial line is doing on this. Nobody agrees that the number should be uh, concealed from the public. So these institutions are one thing, their editorial line is often another. And I think if there is a fraying going on at the moment, I think it's it's certainly being helped along by the fact that Israeli, intel Israeli evidence and military propaganda, particularly the stuff that we're seeing filter out, is becoming increasingly preposterous.